anyway, we're going to look at how to use a Bunsen burner today. Technically, some burners that we use are not actually Bunsen burners. They have a, a, technically a different name because they have a couple extra adjustments that were on Bunsen's original device. But this is the basic Bunsen burner here. Uh, you hook it up to the gas ports. The ports are these little nozzles that are sticking out back there. You simply take the tube, and we have two different types of tube, the black flexible tubing and the green with black ends tubing. Neither is better than the other. But you take it, and you kind of shove it on through the end as best you can there. It gasses off when this is perpendicular to the line. So that's off. All the way on that side is also off. Only when it's in between there or parallel is it actually on. When the gas is on, you usually can hear it. I'm going to turn off the vent here uh, to see if you can hear it. But if you listen closely, you should hear a slight whistling noise coming from this. I'm going to wait for the fan to totally die down here before I do this. Turn the gas on. Just turn it. If you listen, you can hear the gas going through there. If you have trouble lighting the burner uh, the first couple of times, turn it off and let that excess gas that's building up in this area dissipate before you try to light it again. Because if it takes you a long time to light it, you're likely to have a boom uh, or a really big flash at least when you get it. Not really a boom. It's not butane. Um, so, how to light it? You know, we'll use strikers primarily. It's actually uh, advisable to use a striker or a match. These are the safer, simpler, and cleaner. Uh, you can use a, a, another igniter like this. The downside is you are adding an extra fuel source. That's kind of a potential hazard. I'll do that on occasion, but for the most part, you'll use these. These have a little piece of um, flint here, usually, uh, and then a file there. And simply by rubbing that piece of flint across, you can see sparks. Those sparks then will light the gas. That's the Bunsen burner. Uh, technically, you're supposed to push down on the one arm and move the other. I usually put my finger there. Uh, it's probably not the most advisable to do that, but that's how it's always worked best for me. Uh, the Bunsen burner flame, you'll notice, I'm going to turn off the lights here for just a moment. You'll notice it kind of has two cones to it. You have this real large cone, you have this hammer light cone. That happens on occasion. And when that happens, again, let it go out or relight it immediately and do that. What that happened there is I actually got too much gas and the wind or the, the force of the air going through actually extinguished the flame. That does happen. If that happens, just turn the gas back a little bit. Uh, and you can do that either here or on some burners. I'm going to turn on one set of lights here again. Some burners have this knob down here. That knob there adjusts the amount of gas flowing in. There are two other uh, types of adjustments that go here. This one here has a screw. Others have a little sleeve that slides around these open ports. That adjusts how much oxygen is getting in there to mix with the flame. You'll notice the flame color changes when I do this, uh, but I can change the amount of oxygen that gets there. And if I get it real low, it's getting too little oxygen, and the color of the flame is going to change. Your first lab will actually look at well, what color of flame is best, where is the flame hottest, uh, and how to adjust the burner in and of itself. You'll also notice that there is a slight ripple here, or flickering, flickering noise here. That's from the inner flame there that you can see. Uh, it's best to have that as quiet as possible. It's usually very hard, though, to get it totally silenced. I will also point out that, of course, I have on a lab coat. You'll have on aprons as well as goggles just to keep yourself safe around this. On occasion, the gas will ignite early down here. The flames will go down the tube and it will light here, or you will notice that it is burning somewhere here in the tube. If that does happen, turn it off here if you can. If you cannot, the emergency shutoff valve here behind you. Of course, you'll be coming from the back of the classroom, but that is where uh, that is. Any questions so far? Okay. I'm going to go ahead and turn it off then for just a moment. And I need to make sure that I covered everything with the burner that I wanted to. Yes. The question then is, what is actually burning there? 